Take hands. Have you had enough? Actually, I'm just getting started. <laughs> you, on the other hand, are done for. You see, dog breath. There's one other thing that I can do that you can't do. Kui <clears throat> Oloa, great dog man of Kaiki, <clears throat> prepare to meet your end. Just then, Kamapua's body started to shake and wobble and heave like a violently on and on. The trembling continued until it ended in a loud as a single leaf sprouted from his body. Kui Yolo took one look at that leaf and he started to laugh. <laughs> he thought, how would a single leaf destroy a powerful dog man like himself? But that laughter soon ended when another leaf sprouted. And another, and another. Soon all of Kamapua's plant forms emerged from his body and attacked Kui the Oloa, the unfurling Mamu, the twisting Oromea, the branchy Kukui, all wrapped themselves around the dog man who tried desperately to break free. Those plants then tied open his mouth, allowing Kamapua to enter from within and destroy his enemy from the inside out. Kui the Oloa, the great dog man of Kahiki, was defeated. And come up who finally get back to his real reason for being there. Kissing girls! <laughs> Eventually, <laughs> he made his way to a kalohale, a place where people live. And it was there that he saw Kaiki Ha'akulo. One look at Kaiki Ha'akulo, and come up who said to himself, Jeez. Really kissable. <laughs> then Kaiki Hakuno took one look at Tom Boa and she said to herself, He's really kissable. <laughs> and then they kissed. And then they kissed again. <laughs> Come up, Boa and Kaiki Hakuno got along really well and they spent a lot of time with each other. Then one day, Kaiki Hakuno's father, Koya, came running into the alley to speak with them. Would you two please stop kissing for one moment? There's something important I have to tell you. Oh, he's angry. He's angry. Moloka Evo is angry. Who knows what can happen when that one gets upset? Prepare yourselves for the worst, you two. Moloka Evo is angry. Moloka Evo was a supernatural man who lived up in a mountain that would terrorize the land of Ahiki in his anger. He had a huge head, and on that gigantic head of his were eight oar heads made of stone. He would use those four heads to crush and destroy. Two of those four heads were removable. Their names were Lele Maha and Wawakaikalani. He would hurl those four heads to cut down anything in its path. Kamapua decided to put an end to this terror. And he called out a challenge to <laughs> Lono Ka Eho. Woo! Eho no me! Eh, eh, kami ono oi! Eh, hu me kamaru! Eh, hu o kai kai! Mai, mai, mai e hakakami ke ya kwa akamaru an niho! Lono Ka Eho heard the challenge and emerged from the forest to meet Kamapua. What? Big man! <laughs> you think you're so tough, eh? <laughs> you don't fight them! Turn it my head! I'm here! Turn it my four heads! One, two, three, four, five, six, eight! Eight four heads! That's two four heads! <laughs> you're not me, big man! I'm gonna destroy you right now! It will reach up and grab the lily high and roll what they call me and a hurl them and come up for a good them both with ease. Then one of them came charging and come up for a good dot with that huge forehead of his. But come up for a good dot avoided each strike with ease. On and on, one of them continued to pound and pound, hitting the hard ground and dulling his forehead and tiring his body. So. So Kamapua took a spear and threw it directly at Loroka Epo. Ego 
good until the morning that, that the smoke came. It was no ordinary smoke. It somehow smelled pleasant, alluring. Then, from a while, smoke like that would only come from the hot fires of the goddess Pele. Kamabuale smiled to himself as he thought, what might it be like to steal a fiery kiss from the goddess Pele? <laughs> but that, my friends, is a story for another time. <laughs>